In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the mist of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters and God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so and God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day and God said let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear and it was so And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called the seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind. And the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so and God made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night he made the stars also and God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the days and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day and God said let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth a living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image after likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so god created man in his own image and the image of god created he him male and female created he them And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for meat. 30. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life, I have given every herb, every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them and on the seventh day god ended his work which he had made and he 
rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up amidst from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil and a river went out of eden to water the garden and from thence it was parted and became into four heads the name of the first is pison that is it which compasseth the whole land of havila where there is gold and the gold of that land is good there is bdelium and the onk stone, and the name of the second river is Gion. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river, Hidekel, that is it which goeth towards the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meat for him and out of the ground the lord god formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto adam to see what he would call them and whatsoever adam called every living creature that was the name thereof and adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field but for adam there was not found an help meet for him and the lord god caused a deep sleep to fall upon adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and he closed up the flesh instead thereof and the rib which the lord god had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man and Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. He shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the trees is in the midst of the garden. God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. 
And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commended thee that thou shouldest not eat and the man said the woman whom thou gavest to be with me she gave me of the tree and i did eat and the lord god said unto the woman what is this that thou hast done and the woman said the serpent beguiled in me and i did eat and the lord god said unto the serpent because thou hast done this thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field upon thy belly shalt thou go and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life and i will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise this heel unto the woman he said i will greatly multiply by sorrow and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee and unto adam he said because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which i commended thee saying thou shalt not eat of it cursed is the ground for thy sake in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee and thou shalt eat the herb of the field in the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread till thou return unto the ground for out of it was thou taken for dust thou art and unto dust shalt thou return and adam called his wife's name eve because she was the mother of all living unto adam also to his wife did the lord god make coats of skin and clothed them and the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil, and now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden Cherum, and flaming swords which turned every way to keep the way of tree of life and adam knew eve his wife and she conceived and bare cain and said i have gotten a man from the lord and she again bare his brother abel and abel was a keeper of sheep but cain was a tiller of the ground and it process of time it came to pass that cain brought of the fruit of the ground and an offering unto the Lord and Abel he also brought of the first lining of his flock and of the fat thereof and the Lord had respected unto Abel and to his offering but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect and Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell and the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou does well, thou shall not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin leath at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother and it came to pass and when they were in the field that cain rose up against abel his brother and slew him and the lord said unto cain where is abel thy brother and he said i know not am i my brother's keeper he said 
what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground, and now art thou cursed from the earth, which hath opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not hence yield unto thee her strength, a fugitive and vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth, and from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass that every one that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore whatsoever slayeth Cain vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold and the lord set a mark upon cain lest any finding him should kill him and cain went out from the presence of the lord and dwelt in the land of nod on the east of eden and cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare enoch and he built it a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Arad, and Arad begat Megel, and Megel begat Methusel, and Methusel begat Lamech, and Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other was Zillah, and Ada bare Jabal, and he was the father of such a dwell in tents, and of such as have cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal, and he was the father of all such as handle the harp and organ. And Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron and the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama and Lamech said unto his wives Ada and Zillah hear my voice ye wives of Lamech hearken unto my speech for I have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt if Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly in Lamech seventy and sevenfold, and Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and call him by name Seth, for God said, She hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew, and to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called him Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. This is the book of the generations of Adam. And the day that God created man in the likeness of God, he made. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam. In the day when they were created, and Adam lived an hundred and thirty years, and begat a son in his own likeness, an hundred and thirty years, in his own after his image, and called his name Seth. And the days of Adam after he had begot Seth were eight hundred years, and he begot sons and daughters, and all the days that Adam lived were nine hundred and thirty years, and he died. And Seth lived an hundred and five years, and begot in us, and Seth lived after he begot in us eight hundred and seventy years, and begot sons and daughters, and all the days of Seth were nine hundred and twelve years, and he died. And Enos lived ninety years, and begot Canaan, and Enos lived after he begot Canaan eight hundred and fifteen years, and he begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enos were nine hundred and five years, and he died. And Cain lived seventy years, and begot Mahalalel. And Cain lived after he begot Mahalalel eight hundred and forty years, and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Canaan were nine hundred and ten years, and he died. And Mahalalel lived sixty and five years, and begot Jared. And Mahalalel lived after he begot Jared eight hundred and thirty years, and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Mahalalel were eight hundred ninety and five years, and he died. And Jared lived an hundred sixty two years, and he begot Enoch. And Jared lived after he begot Enoch eight hundred years, and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were nine hundred sixty and two years, and he died. 
And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begot Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he began Methuselah three hundred years and begot son and daughter. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred sixty and five years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. And Methuselah lived and hundred eight and seven years and begot Lamech and Methuselah lived after the begot Lamech seven hundred eighty and two years and begot son and daughters and all the days of Methuselah were nine hundred sixty and nine years and he died and Lamech lived and hundred eighty and two years and begot a son and he called his name Noah saying this shall Comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. And Lamech lived after he begat Noah five hundred ninety and five years, and begot son and daughters. And all the days of Lamech were seven hundred and seventy and seven years, and he died. And Noah was five hundred years old, and Noah begat Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And it came to pass, and when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of the men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and... Also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty when men were old men of Rion. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowl of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. And for all the flesh and corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an art of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark and shall pitch it within and without with pitch and this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it the length of the ark shall be 300 cubits the breadth of it 50 cubits and the height of it 30 cubits a window shalt thou make to the ark and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof. The lower, second, and third stories shalt make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a food of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven and everything that it is in the earth shall die." But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives, with thee, and of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female, of fowls after their kind, and of cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing on the earth, after his kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. 
And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation of every green beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of the beasts that are not clean by two, and the male and his female, of fowls also of their air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all earth. For yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth. Forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according unto all the Lord commanded him, and Noah was six hundred years old when the flood waters was upon the earth. And Noah went in, and his sons and his wives and his sons' wives with them into the ark. Because of the ark's waters of the flood, of clean beasts and of beasts that are not clean, and of fowls and of everything that creepeth upon the earth, there went into and to unto Noah into the ark, the male and the female, as the God had commanded Noah, and it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the floods were upon the earth. And the six hundredth year of Noah's life in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up in the wisdoms and windows of heaven were open and the rain was upon the earth for forty days and forty nights and in the self same day entered noah and the shem and ham and jeph and the sons of noah and noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark they and every beast after his kind and all the cattle after their kind and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and every fowl after his kind every bird of every sort and they went in unto Noah and to the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth and the ark went upon the face of the waters and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail and the mountains were covered and all flesh died that moved upon the earth both of fowl and of cattle and of beasts and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man. All in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died and every living substance was destroyed which was upon the face of the ground. Both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heavens and they were destroyed from the earth and Noah only remained alive and they that were with him in the ark and the waters prevailed upon the earth in a hundred and fifty days and god remembered noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark and god made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged the fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from the heaven was restrained and the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated and the ark rested in the seventh month. And on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Arat and the waters decreased continually until the 10th month. In the 10th month, on the first day of the month were the tops of the mountains seen and it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made and he set forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth and he set forth a dove from him and to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground but the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot and she returned unto him in the ark for the waters were on the face of the whole earth then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in unto him into the ark and he stayed yet other seven days and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark and the dove came into him in the evening and lo and her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off 
So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth, and he stayed yet other seven days and set forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. And it came to pass in the six hundredth and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth, and Noah removed his covering of the ark and looked and Behold, the face of the ground was dry, and in the second month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dried. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with three every living thing that is with thee, all the flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons and his wives, and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth, after their kind went forth out of the ark, and Noah builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast will I require it and at the hand of man and at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man whatso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed for in the image of God made he man and you be Ye fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, After I behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seeds after you. And with every living creature that is with you of the fowl of the cattle and of every beast of the earth with you from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth and i will establish my covenant with you neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood neither shall there any more be flood to destroy the earth and god said this is the token of the covenant which i make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations i do set my bow in the clouds and it shall be for a token of covenant between me and the earth, and it shall become to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh, and the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all the flesh that is upon the earth. And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem and Ham and Japheth. And Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. And Noah began to be a husbandman, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine, and he was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without. 
And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went back and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backwards and they saw not their father's nakedness and Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Curse be Canaan, and his servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord of Shemen and Canaan, be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shemen, and Can shall be his servant. And Noah lived after the flood 350 years, and all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. Now these are the generations of the son of Noah, and Shem, and Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood, and the sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madai, Javan and Tubal and Meshet and Tyrus and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Riphat, Togma, and the sons of Javan, Elish and Tarish, Kittim and Dodinim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, every one after his tongue and after their families and their nations. And the sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, and Phut, and Khan, and the sons of Cush, and Seba, and Havilah, and Sabta, and Ramah, and Sebetcha, and sons of Ramah, Sheba, and Dedan. The Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be mighty one in the earth, and he was a mighty hunter before the Lord wherefore it is said even as Nimrod the mighty hunter before the Lord in the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erect and Akkad and Calnet in the land of Shinar out of that land went forth Ashur and builded Nineveh and the city of Riboth and Kala and resin between Nineveh and Kela, the same is a great city, and the Mizraim begat Ludim and Enmim and Lehabin and Nephutim and Pathruzim and Kastluim, out of whom came Philistim and Kaphtorim. And Khan begat Sedan, his firstborn, and Hath and the Jebusit and Amorite and Gergesite and the Hivitite and Arctite and Sinite and the Arvidite and the Zemrite and the Hamathite and afterwards where the families of Canaanites spread abroad and the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon and thou comest to Gerar unto Gaza and thou goes unto Sodom and Gomar and Adma and Zeboi, even unto Lasha. These are the sons of Ham. After their families, after their tongues in their countries and in their nations, unto Shem, also the father of all the children of Eber, the brother of Japheth, an elder, even to him were children born. The children of Shem, Elam and Asher and Af. Fax, Sad, and Lud, and Aram, and the children of Aram, Uz, Hu, Gether, Mash, and Ephax, begat Salah, and Salah begat Eber, and unto Eber were born two sons, name of one Pegel. For in his days was the earth divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. And Joktan begat Almadad, and Shef, and Hazmurf, and Jirma, and Hadoram, and Uzal, and Diktal, and Obal, and Amadel, and Sheba, and Orphanel, and Havilah, and Jobab. All these were the sons of Joktan, and their dwellings was from Mesha, and thou goest unto Sephar, and Mount of the East." These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues and their lands, after their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations in their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from east that they found a plain in the land of Shamar, and they dwelt there, and they said on 
one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to her, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men rebuilded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad unto the face of all the earth. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was an hundred years old and begot Aphrax two years after the flood, and Shem lived after he begot Aphrax five hundred years and begot son and daughters. And... Ephrax lived five and thirty years and begot Selah three years and begot sons and daughters. And Selah lived thirty years and begot Ebner. And Selah lived after he begot Ebner for hundred and three years and begot sons and daughters. And Ebner lived four and thirty years and begot Peleg. And Ebner lived after the begot Peleg four hundred and thirty years and begot sons and daughters. And begot lived thirty years and begot Ru. And Peleg lived after he begot Ru two hundred and nine years and begot sons and daughters. And Ru lived two and thirty years and begot Saruk. And Ru lived after he begot Sarug two hundred and seventy years and begot sons and daughters. And Sarug lived thirty years and begot Noor. And Sarug lived after he begot Noor two hundred years and he begot sons and daughters. And Noah lived nine and twenty years and begot Sarah and Nayar lived after he begot Terah in 119 years and begot sons and daughters. And Terah lived 70 years and begot Abram and Noah and Haran. And now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begot Abram and Narah and Haran. And Haran begot Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his native in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Noah took them wives. The name Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Noah's wife Milcah, and the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Isaac. But Sarai was barren. She had no children. And Terah took Abram, his son, and a lot of his sons, Aaron, son's son. And Sarah, his daughter-in-law, his sons, Abram's wife, and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and Terah died, Haran. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of the country, and I will shun thee and i will make of thee a great nation and i will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and i will bless them from that they bless thee and curse him to curse thee and in thou all families of the earth be blessed so abram departed and the lord had spoken unto him and lot went with him and abram was 75 years old when he departed out of Aran. and abram took sarai his wife and lot his brother's sons and all their substances that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran, and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sichem, and unto the plain of Moret, and Canaanite was then in the land, and the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land, and there build it he had altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and high on the east, and there 
he builded an altar unto the Lord, and he called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed, going on still towards the south. And there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass when he had come nearer to enter into Egypt. <sighs> And he said unto Sarai, his wife, Behold, now I know that thou art a fair woman to look upon. Therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake and my soul shall live because of thee. And it came to pass that when Adam was come into Egypt, the Egyptian beheld the woman that she was very fair. The prince also of the Pharaoh saw her and commanded her before Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house and he entreated Abram well for her sake and he had sheep and oxen and he asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels and the lord plagued pharaoh with his house with great plagues because of sarai's abram wife and the pharaoh called abram and said what is this that thou hast done unto me why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife why saidst thou she is my sister so i might have taken her to be my wife now therefore behold thy wife take her and go thy way and pharaoh commanded his men concerning him and they sent him away and his wife and all that he had and abram went up out of egypt he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him into the south. And Abram was very rich in the cattle and silver and gold. And he went on his journey from the south to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai, unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord, and Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents, and land was not able to bear them, that they might dwell together, for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there is a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and Perizzite dwelled then in the land, and Abram said to Lot, Let there be no strife. I pray thee between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen, for we be brethren, is not the whole land before thee separate thyself. I pray thee from me, if thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou shalt depart right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plains of Jordan that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zor. Then Lot chose him, and all the plain of Jordan and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Abram dwelled in the land of the and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent towards the Sodom. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. And the Lord said unto Abram, After that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward, and thou southward and eastward and westward for all the land which thou seedst to thee will i give it and to thy seed forever and i will make thy seed as the dust of the earth so that if a man can number the dust of the earth then shall they seed also be numbered arise walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it for i will give it unto thee then abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of mamar which is hebron and built there an altar unto the Lord. And it came to pass in the days of Aphra, king of Shinar, Arach, king of Elsar, Sharon, king 
Vilam entitled King of the Nations.